Hello there, my name is Nisman, and today let's look at how to export uh, your meshes from Blender to different 3D programs. Uh, so I have this chess piece uh, that I made, and uh, as you know, I, th I sell 3D models uh, on CG Trader, and uh, you never know who is going to buy your model and uh, what application they're going to be using. So you want to have uh, a range of different formats that can be supported by different applications. And the good thing is that uh, Blender has uh, the most professional or the most used uh, formats uh, that you can export uh, that can be used that can be imported uh, in different applications so if you go under file export you'll see all the a list of different application a list of different formats that can be exported and uh, this is these are the most uh, common ones and uh, I think they add a few more I think this here was not there in the in blender 2.79 so I think this is a new format so you can always come back and look at the list to see if a format you want to be you want to export has been added uh, but uh, let's look at how to export and uh, specifically export fbx because that's the most common uh, file format that I have, I have found being used so uh, let's see let's see let's go I'm going to export this and I have already exported this because uh, I, I already have it on my uh, shop my CG trader uh, account uh, but uh, if you're exporting a mesh uh, with textures or materials, uh, you want to export maps like ambient occlusion, uh, cavity, rough, uh, color, uh, roughness, uh, normal maps and everything because the way materials work in Blender is different from how materials work in 3D, 3D maps, uh, Max, uh, Cinema 4D, 4D and, and other formats. But, but uh, the, the most common way that can be that is similar or somehow similar or that can be supported in blender and other other 3d application is the pbr uh, material setup uh, that means that uh, if we look at this principal shader for a second you can see it has a base color it has these node inputs uh, so instead of feeding a node setup like this you can just feeding textures texture maps to do uh, the exact same thing as these nodes are doing and the way you do that is bake all the setup all the inputs node inputs for the different uh, nodes that you want to export into textures so you can see that uh, this base color has an input coming from uh, this node setup so you would you would bake all this into a texture map and then export uh, the outputs of these the inputs of this roughness into a texture map you can call it roughness and you can also export uh, any other formats any other textures that you want to uh, export to the different formats so to the different applications so uh, the most common ones are roughness sorry our uh, color uh, roughness and uh, metalness and no more map so, so if you export those, those I will have full support, support for every. You will, your meshes will likely will look uh, similar in different application, uh, material-wise, uh, for all uh, formats. So, and uh, that's why you can see here this mesh here. If we go to the materials, has only uh, the PBR texture here, and uh, it only has these. It's only being powered by these three uh, nodes here. Like, actually, this normal map is not doing anything. But uh, you can see that this looks similar um, to this here. Or uh, maybe let me just add a subdivision surface to make uh, this look smooth. So you can see this here looks exactly. Let me just duplicate it so that we don't have to go between different projects. So this here. If we go to the materials and delete this, I, I have, have a PBR, PBR material setup, setup here. here that converts. So we have baked all the textures that are needed to produce uh, this kind of uh, look here into a color map and a roughness. And uh, we are basically getting the same results using only two nodes instead of all these setups, all these nodes that are not supported. In other applications unfortunately I don't have an another application like 3ds max or uh, or cinema 42 to demonstrate this but uh, basically if 
uh, the, the application you want to export to uh, support PBR materials. You can just export the roughness, uh, the color, and the normal map, and you will get the same look as you are getting in Blender. So, yeah. So, if you have if you want to export, say, this, this mesh, you just select it and make sure you have the right PBR material selected uh, or apply to that to that object and then go to File, Export, and then choose uh, the mesh you want to export. Uh, then you can see we have more than one object, uh, but uh, if you only want to export the selected one, you just go under File, Export, FBX, or whatever file format you want to export, export and, and make sure you have selected objects only. Uh, that checked and uh, you'll have you will export uh, the, uh, the objects. So if you want to uh, export uh, the amateur, which is the bones uh, that power the animation, uh, you can you, you make sure that is selected as well. You have uh, the, this is just giving you the options that you can export. So you can export camera, camera data, lamp, amateur mesh, and uh, I think even animation. So if you have that selected, or if you have animation in your scene, you can also export that as well. So after that, just hit export and you'll be done. Uh, if you want to see how you can import formats from other pro from other software to Blender, you can uh, look at uh, a link, you can look at my other video about that. So. Yeah, but basically that's how you do it another thing to keep to keep note of is that uh, if we look at this mesh uh, this mesh comes with uh, subdivision surfaces turned on uh, subdivision surface modifier that's why it's, you see is it has that smooth uh, surface and if we if you export all modifiers you have here will be applied to that mesh so if we have let's say a main modifier, modifier simple deform, deform and we bend this like this. If we export this, let me export it into a format. I think Windows has a format it reads here. I think it reads STL. Is it P? I think this can be read by blend by, let me call this one. Make sure I have. So let's see, let's see what, okay. Yeah, so Windows has can read uh, that format. So if you want to test out how your export looks, you can just do that. So you can see how the mesh looks. Uh, it applied uh, the subdivision surface and also applied the simple deform uh, modifier that we have there. Uh, because when it's oops, yeah, when it, when you're exporting, a uh, blender applies. All these modifiers because our different applications handle other modifiers differently or, or don't have uh, these modifiers so that's why it, it, it has, has to export, export them but, but the problem, problem is that, that if you have a modifier like subdivision surfaces uh, sometimes the person using your model doesn't want to, uh, to have a subdivision surface like that uh, because if you apply that you can see how dense let me also apply this as well you can see how dense uh, the mesh becomes and if someone wanted to use this in a game, in a game, uh, it can be very computer intensive. And uh, since every application has their uh, own subdivision surface or something equivalent to that, uh, there is no need to export a, a mesh uh, that way. So I would recommend, if I undo this a few steps. So what we would do is, uh, Disable the subdivision surface and then apply and uh, yeah, let Blender apply all the other modifiers that you have there uh, so that if we export this again and I reopen this, the other application you're using. I should should have a modifier equivalent to the subdivision surface and they can apply it directly there uh, instead of you applying it in blender and uh, that will keep, keep the mesh count a bit down and uh, uh, if someone is using it in a game then they don't really need that dense mesh uh, they can just use uh, this without that without uh, the subdivision surface uh, thank you for watching uh, see you